And now, B-Movie Mania presents Dark Hollywood. With your hosts, Michael Hayes and Paul A. Brooks. Tonight's guest, Titanic expert, Kara Brooks. To call the hot tip line, dial 419-777-8478. That number once again, 419-7-SQUIRT. Now, from deep within the Windy City, here is Michael Hayes. She was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful ship. Maiden voyage. 10th of April, 1912. It did not last very long at all. In fact, it lasted four and a half days before the RMS Titanic, on its way from Southampton, England, to New York City, the United States of America, sank into the deep, dark, cold Atlantic waters after hitting an iceberg. Very few of the people on the boat survived. What happened? Who knows? But throughout the years, documentarians have discussed and shown the truths they have found about the Titanic and her disastrous maiden voyage. One of such was James Cameron, filmmaker known for such wonderful think pieces as Terminator and T2, Judgment Day. But let's not forget Titanic, the 1997 blockbuster film starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. Tonight on Dark Hollywood, we will discuss the truths that lie therein. And hopefully nothing else. With me as usual is Mr. Paul Brooks. Hello, Paul. Can you hear me down there in your bunker? Michael, I can hear you. Thank you for that lovely intro. And may I just take this opportunity to congratulate you on your daughter's safe, safe return home. (laughs) Paul, I couldn't be happier. My daughter is now safe and sound at home after being kidnapped by those savage, savage kidnappers. She's home, she's safe, she's unharmed. Don't ask me how I paid the one million Bulon ransom that was there, but there's always a way. It wasn't lizard people gold, I can tell you that much. No, no, Paul. General Sprinkles failed us. Yeah, well. And he failed me. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yes. so, so you know, when I heard the news, uh, when, when your wife called me with the news, I was just ecstatic. And uh, so I just wanted to, I know that we've spoken, obviously, about it, but I just wanted to tell you on the program so that the listeners know and just say how happy I am to hear about this wonderful piece of news. Well, Paul, thank you again. And listeners, I'm sure you all have... Thanks for me as well, or you're well. Greetings, that w- words. Sure. For me, thank you. And Michael, may I also take this opportunity to say how excited I am about the program tonight, about our special guest, and about how important I think it is that we are finally getting to the bottom of this mystery <laughs> that has been plaguing Hollywood for years. <laughs> And quite frankly, a mystery that has been plaguing the Atlantic Ocean for well over a century now. Yes, Paul, a wonderful pun, maybe poor taste, but 
Yeah, what are you going to do? I liked it. But Paul, yes, we do have a guest. We have a fantastic guest here, a Titanic expert. A Titanic, Titanic expert even. Yes. Here on what I assume is not her maiden voyage discussing the truths behind the mysteries that are the RMS Titanic from the A Hill to Die In podcasts with her co-host Josie Spicer where her yet unnamed guests and Josie discuss things like is Bigfoot real? Are ghosts real? Should you, Paul, answer me this, Paul. Should you eat food off the floor? Uh, I don't know. I think that you should listen to A Hill to Die On to find out uh, the answer to that question. That is correct, Paul. So if you'd like this, dear listener, to learn the truths behind these mysteries, tune in to A Hill to Die On with our guests. Even, you might even say she's a third co-host for tonight. The wonderful Australian... Car Brooks. Hello, Cara. Can you hear me? Hey, am I? Yes, I can. Oh, this is fantastic. We are broadcasting, and the connections are good. The government has not stopped us yet. Yet. Emphasis on yet. In 1997, James Cameron gave the world a deep look into the dark love and lust that is the Titanic, Jack and Rose. Mm. Kara, it's a tale as old as time. How do you feel about this docudrama? I I, I didn't really care for it, I'll say. Um, wow. Yeah. You didn't really care for... For the film. Titanic. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Is this due to all the inaccuracies and lies? Are you saying James Cameron is not the soothsayer that he says? Um... Yeah, I, I it, it's full of inaccuracies that I think, uh, you know, whoever was doing the continuity or the, maybe like the historical sort of research on that film, I think has a bit to answer for. But unless it was intentional, which I suppose is what, what we're talking about. So. And see, th- this, Michael, is why I'm so excited to have Kara on the show, because I know that on your podcast, A Hill to Die On, You do a lot of research for that show, and we really need to get into some of the research in terms of, uh, you know, figuring out exactly what was going on on this ship, on this big uh, 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 boat, (laughs) you know, called Titanic. Not just the movie, but the, the, you know, the real boat as well. Mm -hmm. Always calling for the truth. Paul Brooks, that is why you are second in command. Thank you. First mate, even. Yes. Kara, you've mentioned inaccuracies within the film. Lies, if you will. What What are some examples of these lies? Um, so one of them was talking about a man-made lake where I believe it was Jack's character said he was uh fishing or something at that lake but then that lake wasn't actually built until several years after the titanic sank ah yes you're speaking of lake winnesota that's the one in in the film i remember this scene very fondly it reminded me of my childhood really jack dawson our character in the film leonardo dicaprio yes uh, his Given name, or as, or as I like to say, Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> I just I had to do it, you know. I mean, I can't I can't not do it. Apologies, Leo. <laughs> Apologies, listeners. Kara, it is sometimes difficult to do a show with Paul. He is his wit is so sharp and so much. I sometimes find myself guffawing and can't think straight. Mm-hmm. I like to uh, hang out on the poop deck. What can I say? Oh, <laughs> another one for you, Mike. <laughs> well, I do remember such fun times myself fishing with my father, but not at Lake Minnesota like Jack Dawson did. Jack Dawson said he went fishing there. 
But this man-made lake was actually not built till 1917 in Wisconsin. And this is where those lies come into effect, isn't it, Kara? Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the first, I think, points of, wait a minute. Because some things could be excused, right? Like his haircut, uh, some of the clothing, I think, is pretty inaccurate. Wait, what's, what's, wrong, what's wrong with his haircut? Just the style of it looks very 90s for uh, something that was supposed to be in 19, what was it, 1912? Mm-hmm. 1912, Yes. I did read something that was sort of trying to tie into that theory, though, right, where his haircut is remarkably like John Connor's haircut in Terminator 2, (laughs) which could just be that was the 90s fashion and that was the it haircut, or is it something else? Hmm. Is Mr. Cameron trying to tell us something he knows? Interesting. Very interesting. Oh, yes. The hair is not quite of the period. That is true. Producer Alex has kindly set up a couple clips for us about these here lies. Producer Alex, can you please play that first clip from the film? The one about vomiting on the Santa Monica Pier? Well, after that, I worked on a squid boat in Monterey. Then I went down to Los Angeles to the pier in Santa Monica and started doing portraits there for 10 cents a piece. Why can't I be like you, Jack? Just head out for the horizon whenever I feel like it. See, we'll go there sometime to that pier. Even if we only ever just talk about it. No, we'll do it. We'll drink cheap beer. We'll ride on the roller coaster till we throw up. (laughs) Then we'll ride horses on the beach, right in the surf. And there it is, another inaccuracy in the timeline that we know. Isn't that right, Kara? Yeah, because that roller coaster did not exist at the time that Titanic sank. What? Paul, things are wild. I'm sorry, uh, let me just make sure I understand this correctly. I mean, the Santa Monica Pier has been around for a long time. What what exactly, as the Titanic expert, Kara, what exactly is the issue here? The pier has been around for a long time. The roller coaster was not there in 1912. So if they're riding a non-existent roller coaster, um, that's a bit of an issue. How does he know about the roller coaster? How does he know that there will be a roller coaster? (laughs) There it is. This is right. The roller coaster, according to research, was not around until 1916. So it's beginning to you know, get a little suspicious here in terms of why this Jack Dawson has knowledge of, you know, these these places that he has supposedly been to that are not around in 1912. Uh, very intriguing stuff here. Unless there was some sort of ghost coaster mm. on the Santa Monica Pier. Well, he was intending to build the roller coaster himself. Hmm. <laughs> He had plans. He does seem like a handyman, Jack Dawson, but I do not believe that was his plan. I mean, maybe that was in his notebook. There was like French girls and then there was a roller coaster blueprints. We'll have to get producer Alex to dig through the frame by frame of the over three hour long film to catch, if he can, a glimpse of what's on those pages other than French girl titties. Um, at any rate, Michael, uh, true, true or not true, would you mind if I write down the, the, the phrase Ghost Coaster as a possible movie title? Can I borrow that? Paul, absolutely. As a Hollywood elite like yourself, you need all the material you can. And I do approve. I think Sci-Fi Channel is going to love that. Ghost Coaster, please just... Give me one small cameo, Paul, when you get famous. Will do. Kara, would you like a cameo? Yeah. I mean, you're going to find me somewhere or you're going to Zoom chat me into the ghost coaster? Hmm. I mean, sci-fi channel movies usually have a pretty small budget. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, it's 
I can be the the science expert that's like this ghost coaster is dangerous. Being able to say that you had the titular line in Ghost Coaster would certainly be uh, a, a notch on your belt. Yeah, absolutely. All of this is fascinating. The ins and outs of Hollywood, the lies and the truths that can be had within a film. Ghost Coaster in the future, Titanic in the past. <laughs> I wanted to point out, though, like one thing that is weird so if, if it's not just bad writing, and if it is that he, he is actually a time traveler, right? Because that's supposed to be the, the main conspiracy theory of this. Yes. To what end? Like, so I've, I read that a theory was supposed to be that he travels back in time to stop Rose from committing suicide. And the idea was that someone said if he had let Rose jump, the ship would have stopped to look for her. And then the iceberg would have melted before the ship. Like, I don't think that's how icebergs really work in that part of the ocean. But, like, the ship that was behind, in front of them, behind them, there was another ship near the Titanic when it sank. And it basically was like, we're not going in the dark around ice, ice giant icebergs. So it stopped. It warned them over the radio about the ice. Like, it was going to be there all night. Stopping and looking for Rose wouldn't have made a difference. So how does that time travel theory check out? If I understand correctly, Michael, um, the theory is that it was less of a melting situation and a, and more of a iceberg moving to a slightly different location that would have been out of the path, direct path of the ship. That is what I have heard. Uh, but that even with that information, Kara does make a good point, and... If Rose dying would have saved the ship from sinking, why was that Jack Dawson's goal? It's the butterfly effect, right? If one small thing happens, uh, it can disrupt the entire timeline by having ripple effects. Mm. And certainly, if someone uh, commits suicide on a ship... That could have long-lasting re repercussions into the future because it would change the voyage of the ship. It would alter the course of history significantly. Uh, it could lead to massive, massive things involving World War I, involving uh, the Terminator, involving Terminator 2. We just don't know. <laughs> that is what I was hoping you would say. I said it. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. But how would you even know, like, okay, time travel paradox. How would you even know that what you're doing is going to change anything in a better way? Because it hasn't happened, right? Well, if he's from the future, as said before. Yeah, so in his future, did the Titanic sink or no? In Jack Dawson's original future, the Titanic did not sink. And that is why he was tasked in making sure that Rose survived and did not commit suicide. So it is a chicken and the egg situation, but you can say the same thing for uh, uh, the, the John Connor situation in Terminator 2. And obviously, James Cameron directed both of those films, so it makes a great deal of sense that he would introduce... Subtly, he would introduce this plot line into the film in order to, uh, you know, please the sci-fi fans and uh, maintain his, you know, he, he does a lot of sci-fi films. This is his thing. This mm -hmm. is what he's into. This is his truth. This is his truth, yes. It is possibly our truth as well. Correct. Who's to say? Not me. Perhaps some of the big guys up in the sky. Want to do a call? You know what, Paul? Yes. Producer Alex, can we get that first call, please? Uh, is this Stark Hollywood? Hi. Uh, Long-time listener. Uh, this is a first-time caller. And I, I, I choose to remain anonymous. But I know I might sound crazy. I was watching James Cameron's film, The Titanic... And I noticed at one point Leonardo DiCaprio was wearing a Casio digital calculator watch. 
And I was wondering if it's possible, do you think that Leonardo DiCaprio is a time traveler from the 1980s who jumped forward into the late 1990s in order to star in a film about the Titanic? Or is there possibly some other explanation for this? I really don't know. Okay, I'll take my uh, answer off air. Thank you. Great call. <laughs> Great call. Thank you, caller. Thank you, caller. And we respect your decision to remain anonymous here on Dark Hollywood. Kara, Paul, do you think this anonymous caller is right? Do you think perhaps we not only have a single time jump, but a double jump? A back and forth, crissy crossy time travel double jump? Do you think that makes more sense than he just forgot to take his watch off? Wow. Sometimes the answer is as simple as, did you take your watch off? I have a completely different outlook on this. I think that this is a great question. Hey, Paul? Yes? Paul? Please share. I think that this is a great question, and I think Paul? that there's actually... Paul? Yes? Oh, you were going into your answer? Yes. I'm sorry. I... You were talking about your question, and then then I got. I'm sorry. Do you want to let me say it? I I will um, rein it in as you've asked me before, and I will allow you to respond. Okay, thank you. Um, th this this actually brings up a really great point because obviously, if Jack Dawson was a time traveler. Uh, perhaps this was his job as a person in the future to uh, maintain some sort of temporal law, if you will. Um, so it's entirely possible, I believe, and Kara, you may disagree with me on this, but I believe it's entirely possible that he has uh, been in multiple decades, multiple years, and perhaps picked up little... Uh, souvenirs, you might even say, from different eras in time, different points in time. And maybe he did forget to take off his watch. It's entirely possible. But I think that he was probably on a mission in the 1980s, thought that uh, that calculator watch looked uh, radical, to use a uh, term from the <laughs> 80s, and decided to, uh, to, to keep it, you know, no harm, no foul. Now, what's really interesting about this is that there is also evidence within the film that he did this with uh, another item from the 1940s. <laughs> I believe that there is a backpack in the film that uh, evidence suggests was slightly out of place. This backpack was manufactured starting in 1939 by the Swedish army. So it is a bit odd to see this within the film. Yes. Um, and again, that just supports the theory that Jack has been on different missions. And maybe he got a little careless at some point. Maybe, you know, it's, it's uh, not something he's supposed to be doing. But, you know, when you get a good quality backpack, you, you want to hold on to that thing, you know? Um, so maybe it's just something that really came in handy when he was uh, aboard Titanic. I have a new theory. Please share. Jack works in a time traveling museum in the very far future, and he just collected some items and decided to travel back. So he's only from the one time. <laughs> he's not a professional, which is why he messed it up so badly. Oh. Um, maybe he saw a photo of Rose and had a crush on her and was like, I'm going to go back and find this girl. And so he just collected a bunch of stuff that was close. So there was, you know, a backpack from the 40s. There was a watch from the 80s. He's just getting what he needs, packing a bag within the time travel museum, and then shoots off to 1912 with really historically inaccurate items because he's <laughs> messing everything up. Entirely possible. I can see Jean-Claude Van Damme showing up just seconds after the Titanic has sank to time cop Jack Dawson back into 
the future. It's 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 all connected, Michael. It's all connected, and we knew this. It we, truly is. We we knew that this was the case. We all know. Every one of us, deep inside of us, that feeling. You know when it's real. Do you think the cuts? There's a cut scene at the very end where like she throws her necklace into the ocean, and then behind her on the boat, naked Arnold Schwarzenegger just like lightnings in. Just out of frame, I'm sure that was there. Uh, again, entirely possible. Same director, uh, possibly the same canonical universe. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't happen. Why don't we now turn our ears and see what else is hanging out on the Dark Hollywood squirt line? Michael, what, uh, were we not calling that the uh, hot, hot tip line? Why is it the squirt line? Well... Paul, that is a great question. We did call it the hot tip line before, but we have gone to a more economical model and we can no longer afford the hot tip line. And we are now doing what is unfortunately named squirt lining. That's cheaper, huh? I thought those were usually one nine hundred numbers. Yeah, it's uh, strange. OK, we'll roll with it. OK, Let's take that call, please. Hey there. Uh, I was calling in because I have a claim here that I am, in fact, the king of the world. Yeah, I have a uh, primary document from the year 1612 signed by King Charles I himself, the ruler of England, uh, who had a, a pretty big rule over a lot of the world. Um I own this deed, and it is, you know, I, I keep bringing it to speculators and they, they and, and and people to appraise it, and they keep telling me it's it's uh, it's of that time, but probably not good for anything. But I am, I legally own, and I am convinced that I legally own uh, the 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 sovereignty of the world. I I just need I just need someone to believe me. I need someone to believe me. Please, could you believe me? Uh, uh, Dear caller. Wow. Hmm. Paul, you sound skeptical of this man's claim of being the king of the world. Uh, no, I think it, it, it might be uh, just best to say we do believe you, caller, and uh, leave it at that. Kara, do you have any response to the possible new king of, of ours? I mean, people sell land on the moon and people sell stars. Like, if you claim something, kind of just how colonialism works, right? Like, <laughs> why not? Why not a king of the world? No wiser words have ever been said. Although in my heart, if I'm being honest, Leo is always going to be the king of the world. Come on. Come on. That's the feeling inside, Paul, that we discussed earlier? Yeah, well, that's what he says that in the movie. Do we have that clip, Alex? Can we just roll that? We don't have that. Okay. We do not have that clip. Weird. Very, well, oh, yes. That's pro yes, it, it's for the budget, Paul. I'm very sorry. Okay. I mean, would you really want to swear an oath to King DiCaprio? Mm. Would that be? <laughs> Turning words back upon... The sword. Yeah, there. good point. Okay, well, I'll go with whoever this uh, Joker on the phone was. He's the king of the world, sure. Thank you again, Joker, for calling. Next call, please, Alex. Hey, so <clears throat> when I was a freshman in college, I had this roommate, and, you know, she she was obsessed with Titanic. You know, like, it had, it was, you know, she had this poster up in her dorm room, and you know, it like just come out on VHS and she's so obsessed with it. And I, I guess my question for you is, whatever happened to her? Uh, her name was Annie something, Annie something, I think. Uh, she's from some small town in South Dakota. Um, yeah, so, you know, I just wondering if you knew what might have happened to her. Uh, thanks. Wow. Some people in our lives just disappear. Are they time travelers? Are they going to the Titanic? 
Well, it made me think of like share houses I've lived in where I didn't really get along with the person as I assume I would not get along with someone that was um, plastering their walls with Titanic posters. But I lived with a guy actually when I was living in the States. And now I'm thinking, was this an actual, um, there was some sort of code in this because he at 3 a.m. almost every night would sit at the piano, which was against the wall that shared a wall with where my head was when I was in bed. And he would play clocks by Coldplay on the piano repeatedly at 3 a.m. Um, so maybe there's a thing where, you know, obnoxious roommates are actually time travelers. <laughs> this sounds rife. The song Clocks by Coldplay, is it a time travel spell to help ease one in through the parallel universes of this existence? Extra strange because I do not recall playing that at all. I mean, if it was early in the morning, okay, but no recollection of that. Uh, it was straight after. Sorry? Straight after I lived with you. So after I moved out of living with, with you when I lived in a share house. Uh, there are so many theories out there, not just that this movie is speaking the truths that have been hidden for so long. There are countless and countless accounts from time travelers and mediums that have proven once and for all that things are not as they seem. One of these theories is that once time travel is invented, much like people say they would go back and kill Hitler, many have gone back to save the Titanic, to stop it from sinking. So many, in fact, that it causes the boat to sink before it even hits the iceberg. Could this be true? Who knows? Kara, would you save the Titanic? I think I'd be more inclined to kill Hitler. Fair. If I was going back. <laughs> you mentioned earlier that you did not care for the Titanic film, correct? Correct. Has this skewed or colored your uh, perception on whether or not you would save the actual Titanic? As a, as a mm. Titanic expert mm. yourself, <laughs> uh, I'm curious as to why that would be that you would uh, not take that opportunity if given the chance. Because then what would my career be? If I would, I'm an expert on the Titanic sinking, would I sabotage mm. my own career to just experience a boat ride? Come on. A harsh reality? It is, it is self, uh, uh, preservation. Yeah. Yes. That is the word you were looking for. If you were really into Pompeii, like the volcano, and you researched it, would you go to Pompeii as it was erupting? Like, No. You don't put yourself in a really dangerous, stupid situation. Like, you can just research it from a distance. And because there weren't a number of safe voyages of the Titanic before its disastrous maiden voyage, it's not like you could have mm -hmm. a safe mm -hmm. Titanic trip. Tr truths, Paul. Truths. Total truths, and it makes total sense. The problem with Titanic is that the Titanic must happen. It's, it's an unfortunate truth. Uh, people have to die. But as we mentioned earlier, uh, it's entirely possible that Jack Dawson was willing to sacrifice uh, roughly 1,500 lives in order to save possibly millions. We, we simply don't know what would have happened if the Titanic hadn't sank. Uh, the Terminator, be it the T-800, be it the t uh, 1,000, be it the T, whatever, it got up to like 8 million or, or something in Dark Fate. We, we simply do not know how uh, it would have changed the world for the worse. So I, I personally mm -hmm. am mm -hmm. uh, grateful for, for what Jack Dawson did in the film. Uh, you know, we, we could all be here because of him. Did someone tie it together? Kara, I think it was you earlier. It's just hitting me now. Was it suggested, Kara, that Leonardo DiCaprio is in fact Jack Dawson 
jumping through time forwards and backwards, living the events and documenting the events himself. Is that what you were saying? No, wasn't that what a caller was saying? Or close to what one of the callers was saying? The caller brought up the digital watch and then... Because they said, yeah, but they said that he would go to the 90s to be in a film about the Titanic. So that was sort of tying mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. they are one. Or that there's some sort of meta thing going on where the film is actually... The same person doing the but same... But I guess maybe he overshot it and went and go and went to star in What's Eating Gilbert Grape and sort of hung around for a bit until that opportunity arose. Right? Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Perhaps the acting bug bit him, much like Paul, as he is in Hollywood just now. Uh, Learning to act and act his heart out. Fantastic, Paul. Thank you. Why don't we go ahead and hear from one of you callers, one of your theories. Hi, guys. My call has to do with who I believe actually sunk the Titanic and the hidden story behind the movie. Um, It's well known that Catholics were distressed to find employees at Harland and Wolf, the Belfast company that built the Titanic, that the employees there had put the number 390904 on the ship, which read, of course, if you look at it in a mirror, it says, no Pope. Now, the Titanic, historian Walter Lord wrote, that this is false and there never was a number like that given to Titanic. But where did those stories come from? How do some people seem to think there's the number that says no Pope backwards and others don't? How could that be? And it's a fact that Harland and Wolfe drove off all of its Catholic employees in the late 1800s. So by the 20th century, Harland and Wolfe had a reputation for only employing Protestants. Could it be that the time travelers who sunk the Titanic were actually Catholic? And time traveling Protestants obviously would have went back to try to save the ship when they learned about this, but they couldn't. So, you know, I think G- uh, James Cameron, he's a smart man, which is why he made Jack Dawson a Protestant time traveler. It's the only explanation as to why he doesn't save himself in the end, when he obviously could have just crawled up on that that bed frame. He went under the water, disappeared from sight, and returned to his own time. And that, I mean, it's a sad story in its own right, but not one that we're led to believe. Oh, caller. Factions upon factions. People against people. When will these wars end? Mm. Deep, deep, dark stuff, Michael. (laughs) I think I see it more as like a class issue than a religious issue like if you look at the statistics of the people that died and the people that were saved in the titanic i mean i get that the way that the decks work the upper decks were first class second class it goes down they but they like poop deck poop deck the best deck of the ship they locked people in the lower levels to try and contain air underneath the air would keep the ship afloat for a little bit longer um, than it wouldn't have otherwise mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, to stop the water going the whole way up. But, you know, locking people to their deaths, which were lower class people, like working class people. So it seems more like a class war sinking than like, let's just filter out <laughs> the lower classes and we'll, we'll save the rich. It's an interesting point, And I think that that ties together nicely with the fact that the caller mentioned the phrase, no Pope. Mm-hmm. Uh, it brings to mind Popeye's Restaurant, which, if you look closely at their logo, actually says Pope Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, you know, red, red light, green light here. Pope Yes or no Pope, you know? Could Popeye's, the Louisiana fast food restaurant, have gone back in time and sunk the Titanic? Uh, you know, I think it's entirely possible. Maybe Rose started Popeye. Oh. That sounds like the truth. It feels like that inside me. I think we also need to point out that, you know, the the significance of Rose uh, in terms of what the timeline uh, could look like in the future 
We simply don't know if there is a connection to, uh, for instance, Rose's uh, children. Maybe they were important in the future. Maybe uh, Mm -hmm. Rose's Mm -hmm. grandchildren uh, played some sort of significant role in history. Um, We don't know if at some point down the line, one of her offspring or or children eventually married a Connor and led to the birth of one Sarah Connor, which led to the birth of one John Connor. These could be the connections that we simply don't have uh, the information on because it's stuff that happens in the future. But I think it's very important to understanding uh, Jack's motives. I could not agree more. I saw that as a theory, saying that I think it said she was her grandmother or something. I don't know how well the... What, if it's 1912 and she was in her 20s and the 80s, does that check out, grandmother? Great-grandmother, it could be. Great-grandmother, I think, would be more. I hope it's true. The singularity seems unpleasant. Singularity and so many synchronicities as well. Oh, yes. But also, it, it brings into question, like, what if all the people that died on the Titanic in those lower decks gave birth to, like, 50 John Connors, or you know, the equivalent, or one of them was going to have a great-grandchild that built a company that rivaled Skynet that fought all the AI in a better way. It could be entirely possible that Jack was there to make sure that the ship sank, because if mm-hmm. they did mm-hmm. give birth to 50 identical uh, John Connor clones, that cannot be a good thing. You would want that yeah. ship to sink at that point, because clearly, at that point, Skynet has come back into the past to mm-hmm. alter uh, and apparently impregnate uh, several Titanic passengers with John Connor clones. It's an excellent point. Uh, mm-hmm. And again, mm-hmm. you know, we just don't know exactly what the motives were behind it. Okay, wait, new theory. What if Jack... Is actually a Terminator. Mm. He dies in the same way, right? Like sliding down and just disappear. Wow. Wow. I am so glad you brought that up, Kara, because I wanted to point out that, uh, you know, at the end of the film, and there's been much uh, controversy about this in terms of Jack's uh, character dying at the end when he... Slips into the icy depths of the Atlantic. Uh, Look, people... Wake (sighs) up. Wake up. Entirely possible that he he sinks right down there (laughs) so that he can slide out of view so that he can quantum leap out of there. Come on. Mm -hmm. Uh, Obviously, in the future, they have rescue techniques set up so that when the mission is complete, you know, they're going to get their guy out of there. That was his way of, uh, you know, exiting Mm -hmm. the stage, essentially. Mm -hmm. He had to go bacula. Correct. Why don't we take one one, uh, last call here? Sure. Fantastic. I'm glad you agree. Hello, this is your host from Describe Fear, calling to you from 1996. All I know is... If you're doing the story on Titanic, I just had to call in. I loved Titanic. Two-part miniseries, CBS, aired this year. I mean, I already know that 1996 is the best year of cinema, hands down, because it made Titanic my favorite movie. Clearly the best film of all time. That being said, I have two questions for you. Um, I wanted to know, in your opinion, if... And secondly, therefore... And it's amazing, all right? Subscribe to here. Some sort of weird time travel shit going on. I'm not sure. Artsy or like... What are your thoughts? Uh, oh, 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 oh. Uh, what did we just hear? Uh, Cara, do you have... Is that some sort of... Tita- can you shed some sort of light on... Was that some sort of historical uh, Titanic boiler room noise or something going on there? Or was he quantum leaping? It was definitely, yeah, something. I think it was not of this world. At least not one that we recognize. I, I, I'm sorry. 
Did he did did he say his name was Host? Host, I believe that is what the caller said. From Describe Fear. I believe it's pronounced Describe Fear. Well, I'm sorry, but that 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 doesn't make much sense to me if I understand correctly. I mean that 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 was a show about uh uh movies that came out in 1996, no? Oh, yes, Paul. It seems that Wikipedia has just now been updated with the fact that there is an earlier 1996 version of Titanic. Oh. Starring Catherine Zeta-Jones and Peter Gallagher. Oh, okay. This, I don't remember this existing two minutes ago. Uh, Yeah, I I don't understand. uh, No, that doesn't ring a bell. Is this like the Mandela effect? Yes. Oh, wow. Um... My that frequency hurt my head. Was it a television movie, Titanic, or is he talking about Titanic Two? Because that came out. No, it but that was an out in nineteen ninety six. Yeah. yeah, Titanic, the one we're talking about, was ninety seven. Right? I'm looking at this web page that says it has existed f- for twenty five years. Um, it does say it was a two part mini series on the United States Channel CBS. Hmm. Also had Tim Curry in it. I love Tim Curry. Oh, mm. Have to uh, have to look into that one. Not familiar. Wild. Thank you, uh, host. I guess. I am still confused, but we must press on. Yes. Oh, okay. Producer Alex is waving his arms. We will have a quick word from our sponsor. Do we, Alex? Do we still have the Night Beast contract? Oh. Yes, just B-Movie Mania lost. Okay, thank you. Yeah, did you hear about that, Mike? Yeah, yes, I did. I was worried Excuse that... Excuse me, Michael? Thank you, Paul, for using my Christian name. I heard about that with B-Movie Mania, and I was worried that we also had lost sponsorship from our favorites over at Nightbeast Industries. But apparently, they're the ones who fucked up, not us. Well, that was not okay. You shouldn't have said that. I hope that that does not reflect poorly on oh, us. But geez. I have to tell you, the guys over at B Movie Mania, uh, you know, because I'm on that show as well, uh, they are not happy about losing that sponsorship deal. So we got to do whatever we can to hold on tight. I agree. So let me go ahead and read the ad copy they've given us for this uh, product that I'm sure is a wonderful marvel of science and technology and is in no way problematic. With the gates of hell opening wider and wider as this dumpster planet careens towards the S side of the moon, driven by actual people who think very dead leaders are going to come back to actual life and suck their orange hero dry instead of throwing his flappy meat sack into a lake of perpetual fire, wouldn't it be nice if you could just fast forward past all of it to the inevitable dark, silent void that awaits us all? Well, now you can. Night Beast Industries has developed a groundbreaking new homeopathic technology that will bring you to your unavoidable demise a little faster. Simply place two drops of Night Beast Industries' new patent-pending time travel tincture under your labial hood or scrotal sac each night, and you will discover the amazing effects that can happen with this time-traveling remedy. You won't miss the good moments, but as you become less connected with this timeline, you will feel yourself moving through time just a little bit faster so you can relax, as you know the eternal nothingness will arrive sooner. Plus, it's packed with kale. That's a good thing. So go to bit.ly slash nightbeast to get your free sample today of Nightbeast Industries' time travel tincture. That's bit.ly slash nightbeast to live long and die sooner. And may I just say to anyone from Night Beast Industries who might be listening to this episode that I cannot wait, I cannot wait to try that new product. It sounds absolutely delightful. It is a beautiful sounding product. Kara, have you ever used any of these wonderful Night Beast products? I have not, but you may. Well, use our code, Night Beast and you'll get a discount. Cool. Akara, do you enjoy a hard seltzer every now and then? Mm. Hard seltzer? Is that like sparkling water with alcohol? 
It is an alcoholic beverage. Night Beast has a fine line. I mean, I don't really drink alcohol and I hate sparkling water, so... Uh, I just tried... What's a seltzer? You just keep saying seltzer. This is this is fascinating. We are, Michael. Michael, this is fascinating. I believe we are mm-hmm. experiencing some sort of cultural divide. They do not have seltzer in Australia. So, like, I've heard it, but I just don't know what it is. It is a hard. It is a hard seltzer, and it is uh, the night be the entire night beast line of hard seltzers are delightful, including mm-hmm. Sheriff Cinder's uh, sour apple cider. I would recommend that one. One of my favorites. Absolutely. And uh, seltzer. Try it. Does it taste like aspirin? Is that what seltzer is? You will have to try it for yourself. We will, you know what? Well, uh, producer Alex, could we, is there a way that we could ship her a six, maybe a sixer of uh, the papaya flavor? Do you like papaya, Cara? He doesn't. Right. Okay, Alex. Have you ever tried we... to ship something to Australia, though? It's like thirty bucks for something real small. Uh. Well, uh, then, maybe we could fit that in the budget. Uh, he's he's I... he's giving it the. No. He's giving us the no on that. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Ka- Sorry, Kara. <laughs> You'll have to go without the night beast, but Paul. And I can drink them for you because we love Night Beasts. We love them very much. We'll 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 uh, we'll toast to you and we'll pour some for Jack Dawson. Yes, who's probably still alive. Maybe he'll be in another movie someday. Let's hope so. Titan. I mean, it's too bad that he wasn't in Titanic too. How cool would that have been? You ever seen that? I haven't. When did that come out? Two thousand twelve, I think. It's pretty sweet. Is that the one, Paul, where the tsunami? Throws that iceberg at the ship. I believe that's correct. Yes, um, I might uh, even go so far as to say that it's better than Titanic One. I would recommend our listeners check it out. Is it full of the truth? It. I mean, you might even say that it's double the truth, Michael. Well, this has been a fascinating discussion of the truths that are hidden right in front of our faces here in this dark Hollywood. Absolutely. Fascinating stuff. Tonight, it has been our pleasure to have guests Kara Brooks, Titanic expert, amongst many other expertises. Kara, is there anything you'd like to let the audience know if, in case they want to hear more of you? Um, yeah, so check out A Hill to Die On. Uh, we're on Spotify, podcast app, like anywhere you get podcasts. Uh, we have a website, which is, I should know what it is by now. I'm pretty sure it's a hill to die on pod.com. Um, and we just basically cover all sorts of different topics. Um, I think the last one that we did that is getting released soon is will AI take over the world? So that seems pretty relevant to mm. what we're talking mm. about today. <laughs> um, but we Absolutely. cover everything from like conspiracy theories to health questions to uh, like common misconceptions or like old wives tales kind of thing. Um, I think it helps you figure stuff out or like learn stuff about yourself or why you should or shouldn't do things. So there's definitely things that I've learned doing it that has made me change my behavior. Um, probably for the better or at least in a healthier way. Um, like, okay. For example, one of the, one of the questions we did was, should you wash new clothes before wearing them? And I was straight away like, hell no. Like, new clothes when they're fresh is the best. Like, just put them on, you're good to go. Hmm. Um, completely <laughs> changed my mind. I won't tell you why, but, yeah, mm. that to me was a was a game changer. Listen to find out about clothing. And I'm guessing, uh, Cara, that you, there's also quite a bit of Titanic discussion on the show, you being mm. a Titanic mm-hmm. expert. Mm-hmm. I try to not mix business with pleasure, so... Ah. Uh, ah, uh, yes, Good work ethics. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We do talk a lot about Prince Philip, though. Was he a passenger on the Titanic? <laughs> no, nah, he's just real old. Okay. Ah. Well, then he maybe he was. Yeah. Well, Kara, thank you for being on. Paul, 
Would you please thank Cara for being on? Cara, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a pleasure getting to talk with this uh, fascinating and mysterious topic with you, and we thank you for your expertise, uh, not just on the uh, ship itself, but on the movie that you said uh, you didn't care for. Yeah. I mean, it was one viewing in 1998, so I think we can... You, you know what? Paul, Alex is waving here. Paul, Alex is waving. Mm-hmm. That usually means something. Oh. Oh, there, there is another call. We, we are finishing the show. I don't know. Should we take this last call? Should we? There's a, a on the uh, hot t- or the um, not hot the squirt tip line. line. The squirt line. Remember? Yeah, we don't sure. have the money. Yeah, I mean, might tip. as well. Car, do you mind uh, one one last call? Maybe some quick discussion. No, go for it. Fantastic, caller. Let's see what you have to say. Ahoy, poop deck paranoia, Michael. It's me, the pirate man ye seek. I have your heart to the ocean daughter, and I've got her away in, in the booty hole, and I'm going to keep her until you give me my precious treasure map. Hey, my treasure map that I know ye stole working in my ship all those years ago. Our hoy, and I need... You want that the damn thing I need? What the fuck am I? Get the fuck! Get those maps back up! Now, damn it! Michael, I want my goddamn map, okay? I just want my goddamn map. I don't really don't care and all these other things. I'm a pirate, goddammit. And I want my fucking map. So you, you need to meet me at the carnival ride. The bumpy smurf over in the, you know where, the carnival one, the one, the only one in town. You fucking know where it is. Now give me my, my map, Michael. Oh, oh no. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Ah. Uh. Oh, so please forgive me. I am feeling lightheaded. Uh, 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 did I hear that correctly? Was was that about was that about your daughter? Uh, uh, what's oh. what's her name? Alice. Paul. She is named Alice, and also I did name her middle name after this film. Her name is Alice Heart of the Ocean Haze. Oh. And yes, that's who he was talking about. I, I don't understand. I had just gotten my daughter back. And I took her to the fair to celebrate being back. And I, I know who this is. There was a ghost pirate there. Yeah. And I did. I thought it was trash at first. Sure. But I took this paper. It was a map. It turned out to belong to this ghost pirate. And I told him to fuck off and I left. Well, don't. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm emotional right now. But so this must be him wanting the map back. He somehow got a hold of Alice. Oh, I'm so. I just got her back. I'm so. I, I can't believe this. I'm so sorry. Foiled by a ghost pirate of all. Was he telling you to meet him at the ghost crystal? Well. This thing. <laughs> oh, man. Right under our noses. Okay. I'm never going to get Alice back. My daughter. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. What am I supposed to do? Michael, just stay calm. I, stay. I just got her back. Don't ask me how, but okay. I got the okay. bullions. All right. <laughs> Paul, uh, I can't do this. No, it's fine. Uh, I'm gonna- I can't. I'm going to take us out. Uh, we're we're going to get this worked out, Michael. Uh, listeners, thank you once again for joining us on this episode of Dark Hollywood. We will see you next time. And until then, please hold on tightly to the ones you love. Thank you. Mm-hmm.